as you know, uh, Hillary Clinton was the preferred choice of the entire Democratic establishment. Uh, governors, senators, congresspeople, dog catchers, the mailman, all of it. And she obviously was an inauthentic corporate-backed shill. And she lost to a reality TV star orangutan uh, who became president of the United States. And we've been focused on, we've been covering him and focusing on him. Uh, Emma's been doing some great videos. I've done some stuff. So we're not ignoring Trump. However, you would think that if they were so wrong, all these people that backed Hillary Clinton, that they would kind of shamefully and with their heads down, you know, go off quietly into the night and let the progressives take over, right? You would think. Because they, what could they bring forward that has any credibility? What policies, what ideas can they push forward that have any credibility after they? I'm talking about Donna Brazil. I'm talking about John Podesta. I'm talking about Neera Tandon. I'm talking about all these people who said, no, no, no. You know, the millennials, they'll come. They'll come. They'll come on, vote, on election day. They'll come for Hillary. And the African-Americans, no, 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 they'll come. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about the polls right now. They'll come. They'll come. And they said, oh, Trump, you know, we just got to make him so unpalatable, so horrific that they just, won't have a, they just won't have another option. So these same people who were so wrong, who have no concept of what actual average working class people go through in this country because they are very disattached from the working class. I'm not because I'm out in the field reporting and focusing on working people. White, black, brown, doesn't matter. I bring you those stories. And I hope you'll go watch the reporting I've done uh, from Alabama. Uh, I recently went down to Birmingham, where Birmingham, predominantly black city, uh, was going to raise its minimum wage from the starvation wage of seven twenty-five to $10.10. And shocker, the all-white state legislature in notoriously racist Alabama shut them down. So those, those videos are up on TYT Politics. Now, Miguel, I'll get to the point when I'm ready, okay? Go screw yourself. Now, so the Democratic establishment, they are clinging to power and hanging on for dear life. And share this video, it's very important. They are not going down with a fight. They have no shame. They have no problem putting the country at risk further by continuing to push their neoliberal agenda. And I wrote a story on it today for Mediate. If you don't know, I write for Mediate.com. Go check that out about why the media still puts forward these corporate bought-off establishment Democrats. So you look at uh, MSNBC over the last day. I've seen Donna Brazil, the disgraced former DNC chair who fed questions, to Hillary Clinton's campaign during debates. I've seen Jennifer Palmieri, who is Hillary Clinton's communications chairperson. She's on MSNBC now all the time. She was on with Donna Brazil. She was implicated in WikiLeaks as doing some very shady things. She was on Chuck Todd's show a few weeks ago saying, oh, don't be confused that this resistance happening all over the country, that these people also want $15 minimum wage. It's not necessarily about that, which was astounding to people and me and and they've had uh and they're having john podesta john podesta of course his emails were um stolen uh presumably by by some source that fed it to wikileaks and he now has a plum washington uh columnist position he's a columnist now for the washington post so all you have to do in america is be so inept so wrong have no political instincts have no concept of where the American people are out, and you get to go on cable news, you get columnist positions, and you are put forward as, you know, people we should seriously think about and, and take what they say uh, seriously. So let me tell you the latest development. Okay. Well, if you follow politics, you'll know that uh, the conservatives, the Republican Party every year, has something called CPAC. It's the Conservative Political Action Conference. And it's basically, you know, a conference that all these right wing zealots, the establishment and the Tea Party folks and the religious, the religious uh, zealots and all these people, they come together in one uh, one ballroom to make speeches. And who could out crazy the next person and who could who could be more extreme than the next? 
and they have they have you know keynote speakers every year. You know, they've had Ann Coulter, they've had Glenn Beck, they've had Sean Hannity, uh, Rand Paul. It's 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 just a conservative orgasm uh, type of conference, and it's it's the who's who of the Republican Party. Trump, President Trump spoke there this year. And usually as you get closer to uh, another election, it's considered as kind of the, uh, the debut, the stage for possible candidates to kind of make their impression. So apparently uh, the corporate Democratic establishment, in their wisdom, after losing the election because of their policies, their candidate, their ineptitude, their stupidity, their corruption... They want to have their own CPAC from Politico. Instead of CPAC, it'll be the Ideas Conference. Instead of taking place at National Harbor, it'll be the main room at the St. Regis Hotel. Very fancy. A few blocks from the White House. Instead of featuring President Donald Trump, it'll be the first real cattle call of the Democrats nosing around 2020 presidential runs. And it'll be the Center for American Progress's biggest move yet to establish, it, establish itself as both the nexus of the Democratic Party's future and a player trying to shape what that future will be. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my gosh. I can't take any more of it. I can't take it anymore. Okay. If you don't know what the Center for American Progress, it's the exact opposite of progressive. The Center for American Progress was founded by, are you ready? Say it with me now, John Podesta, John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign chairman. Uh, The Podesta emails were the leaks that went on for days and days and weeks and weeks at the end of the campaign that I reported on. Uh, He is the leader of the pack of the establishment, and he founded the Center Center for American Progress, which is essentially a think tank, but really just an enclave and a cabal for corporate bought off politicians to put out platitudes about being progressive when in fact their policies are kind of establishment and friendly to Wall Street, right? So John Podesta founded it. And then later, uh, a woman named Neera Tanden became president. Neera Tanden is Hillary Clinton's number one fangirl. She's been Hillary Clinton's, um, one of her top aides uh, before. She's been following Hillary Clinton and a close confidant to Hillary Clinton for many, many years as f- when, when Clinton was in the Senate, uh, uh, her first presidential campaign and her second presidential campaign. She was implicated in WikiLeaks all over the place. I had a little fun with it at her expense, so I apologize, Nira. Uh, I called her the faux progressive on Twitter every time I tweeted about her because she's not a real progressive. Um, and now, of course, Nira Tandon uh, are coming on, uh, is being invited onto CNN and MSNBC because she she's so right about politics and what candidates we should put forth. So John Podesta and Neera Tandon, their little brainchild, the Center for American Progress, which is not progressive at all, which puts forward policies that are totally incremental, gradualism, and fake progressive. They're not for universal health care. They're not for breaking up the big banks. Uh, They are certainly not against the permanent uh, war (laughs) that we've been in, and, you know, the military-industrial complex. They're not for reinstating Glass-Steagall. They're not for, I mean, name a progressive policy. They're not for it. They're for, you know, changing the side dishes on the plate, but not the main meal. That's what they're for. So, reading on, it'll be the Center for American Progress's biggest move yet to establish itself as both the nexus of the Democratic Party's future and a player trying to shape what the future will be. They're modeling the event roughly on the Conservative Political Action Conference, the American Conservative Union's annual gathering that becomes a prime stop for Republican leaders. Quote, so much of our time right now is engaged, and rightfully so, in fighting Trump. On any given day, he issues one affront to progressive values after another, said Center for American President Neera Tandon. Quote, it's obviously critical that we provide a positive alternative of how we're going to address the country's challenges. You know what? I do agree. We do need to come forward as a Democratic Party, as progressives, to put forward our agenda. It can't just be resist, resist Trump. He's awful. Make him make him the boogeyman and expect all of his voters to come back to us because that didn't work so well the first time. The problem is you, Neera Tandon, you, the Center for American Progress, is not, not the messenger 
that will be putting forth our platform to go against President Trump. And the fact that you think you're going to be that and you're trying to put yourself forward as that, the arrogance, your arrogance is mind-boggling. I don't know you, Neera Tandon. I don't know you, John Podesta. I don't care. I don't have anything personally against you. If we met in a coffee shop, I'd say hello and we'd exchange pleasantries. But politically, you're toxic. You are not progressive. And you do not have the right or the credibility to host a conference and shape the policy agenda for the Democratic Party or any party to, to resist President Trump. Hell nah. Uh, eh, uh, uh, uh. Not happening. So Democratic Senators Elizabeth Warren of Massachusetts, New Jersey Senator Cory Booker, uh, California Senator Kamala Harris, Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy, and New York Senator uh, Kirsten Gillibrand, uh, Montana Governor Steve Bullock, and Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti are all confirmed to attend. And more are expected to be added to the event, scheduled for May 16th. So, other than Elizabeth Warren and maybe Kamala Harris, because the jury's still out on her, the, the entire uh, speaker's lineup for this conference is bought off establishment shills. The entire. Cory Booker, establishment shill. Uh, Chris Murphy, establishment shill. Kirsten Gillibrand, establishment shill. Montana Governor, establishment shill. Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti, establishment shill. They all accept money from Wall Street. They all accept money from Big Pharma. They all expect, expect, expect money from the big banks and big oil and Big Pharma. Yet, we're going to go and have a conference and put forward these people as the progressives that are going to put forth our policy ideas and our positive agenda to go up against President Trump. And you know what? Behind the scenes, I'll give you a little behind the scenes here. Emma, my trusted colleague and I, we tend to have some disagreements about one Elizabeth Warren. I'm not totally against Elizabeth Warren. I still think she's progressive. I think she uh, has done a lot of good things uh, for the progressive movement. I think uh, in some ways her heart is in the right place. I don't agree. Uh, I, I think she is o more political than she let on when she rose to stardom. I think she uh, puts political considerations ahead of the progressive movement time after time. And I have lost respect for her 100 percent. But I don't agree with people who call Elizabeth Warren a sellout and say she's establishment. And, you know, I don't agree with that. Um, we can't be so black or white uh, because if we're that black or white, we're not going to have any progressive candidates to put forward. I would say Elizabeth Warren is progressive, but she didn't show up for the biggest progressive fight of the 21st century. Frankly, the biggest progressive movement since Bobby Kennedy, probably in the late 1960s. Um, she didn't show up for DAPL. She hasn't really said much about the drone war, about us killing all these innocent people around the globe. So there's places that I'm not fond of Elizabeth Warren. But make no mistake, if she was going up against President Trump, I'd be out there with the pom-poms for Elizabeth Warren. And I think you guys should too. Okay? I'm, I'm just keeping it real. But the fact that Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris and Chris Murphy and Cory Booker and all these people are going to a conference hosted by Neera Tandon and the fake progressive Center for American Progress is astounding to me. It's astounding to me. And let me tell you something. I know Bernie Sanders doesn't watch my videos. He's a little busy. But I hope to God Senator Sanders does not grace Neera Tandon or the fake progressive Center for American Progress with his presence to speak. I get it, Bernie. You want to work with the establishment. And, you know, I don't agree with you all the time on that. But do not... Do not lend them your credibility because these are not progressives. Neera Tandon in the 90s was one of the behind-the-scenes behind the uh, aides who helped ram through welfare reform. Welfare reform that helped, cut, helped knock many, many poor uh, single mothers and African Americans off the welfare rolls. While Bill Clinton said, the era of big government is over. So... Speakers have been encouraged to come with substantive proposals on the economy, climate change, national security, civil rights, 
reproductive rights, and immigration, rather than just political attacks on Trump. Sprinkled through the day will be panel discussions and conversations that will bring in activists and leaders of new organizations. Oh, God. So let me tell you something. I've been in media for a long time, even before the Young Turks. This is a cheap excuse to hold a conference, make some money, have some thought leaders, and basically stroke your own egos. There is nothing truly progressive that will be put forth at this conference. I'm sorry. I'm all for having a conference. I am all for have crafting a positive message, an alternative message to go up against President Trump. But these people are not, not the messengers that need to be putting that message forward. Hell to the no. Hell no. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Jordan, you're such a Bernie bro. And, you know, you got to stop hammering the establishment. You're working with Trump and you're working with the Kremlin and focus on Trump and stop attacking the establishment. You, you're the reason Trump became president. To that, I say, piss off. I'm not the reason Trump won. Neera Tandon is the reason Trump won. John Podesta is the reason Trump won. Donna Brazil is the reason Trump won. And share this video. Let's get this out. Let's get this message out. When, when people who have been in politics for 20 years and have not been on the ground in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Ohio, Illinois, uh, a lot of other states outside of the Rust Belt that are hurting, that have had their jobs stolen from them and sent to China and Mexico and all of this, who have not been on the ground to see what the war on poverty really looks at, have not been on the ground to see the middle class becoming the working poor. And I'm not patting myself on the bat that I've been to these places because a lot of politicians have. But I'll tell you what, Neera Tandon hasn't, John Podesta hasn't, Donna Brazil hasn't in a long time. And to her credit, Donna Brazil has done some good things for minorities and African Americans and worked on poverty issues. So it's not all bad, uh, deceptive Donna, as I like to call her. Uh, by the way, all, all of these people blocked me on Twitter. So I guess I'm you know, making some progress in my career. But the bottom line is, the reason I'm so critical of the corporate Democrats is because I want to beat Trump. I want to beat the Republicans. I want to reverse this trend of income inequality that is permanently clouding and destroying our country. I want all those things. You think I want Trump in office? Hell no. I think he's a danger to the republic. I do. And if you haven't noticed, I've been doing plenty of videos on President Trump. So is Emma. So is TYT politics. We're just not going to do it at at, at the Trump derangement syndrome level of many other outlets. We're just not. And frankly, I keep it real. The Young Turks does too much Trump. And I say that publicly. And I've told them that. You know, there's a lot of other things going on in the country other than Trump. But on, on cable news and the New York Times... That's all we get. And that's why I think, uh, I hope you're watching TYT Politics because I want to offer you something different, something unique, and something important. Because the problem is, if we just resist Trump with the same people that got us Trump, we're going to end up putting those same people back in office. Will it be modestly better than having Trump in office? Yeah, probably. Not as Way less racism, way less xenophobia, way less misogyny. But on economics, there is not much of a difference. And that is the problem. And we can't act like Democrats are so much. The Democratic Party is so far superior to Trump and the Republicans because they're not. Both parties have put us in this situation where we live in an oligarchy and a gilded age similar to the 1920s, where all the money is getting hoarded to the top and the rest of us scrounge for scrounge for crumbs. So. I'm not, a, I'm not doing videos like this because I like have fun, you know, giving it to Neera Tandon or giving it to Donna Brazil or giving it to Jenna, Jennifer Palmieri or, or John Podesta. I'm doing it because these people are dangerous to the country. They're not dangerous in terms of what they say is vitriolically scary, like Trump or Steve Bannon. They're not that kind of dangerous, but they are what I call the slayers of the status quo. They represent the status quo. And if you give them the microphone and the platform to hold conferences and have all the prospective potential 2020 Democratic candidates come and do their auditions like it's American Idol, we're putting the same people who drove us into the ditch back behind the wheel. 
I'm not going to sit idly by and allow that to happen. Hell no. Hell no. I'm so scared by this, I'm, I'm sweating. Actually, no, I just live in New York City and it's too expensive to put my air conditioning on. Because climate change is making it hot in March.